Yeah, come on in, mate. You're filming my documentary, like. Right, come on in. Today, on Ryan Rolf's Kitchen Conundrum, I am going to teach you, the audience, how to make a perfect mashed potato. We won't need many ingredients at all. Some people use milk and cream. The only thing I'm going to use is milk and butter. Flora light butter, that is, as you can see. But the first thing we need is a mashed potato. Follow me. Mate. It's best to store your mashed potato somewhere cold so it don't get sweaty. I've used my garage, mate. But you don't put it somewhere too cold like in freezer because it's frozen. It'll taste like shit, won't it? Come on. Let's cook a mashed potato. Before you start cooking, mate, make sure to always wash your hands to get rid of all bacteria to make your hands nice and clean, ready to cook the perfect meal. Also, mate, make sure you wash your potato as well to get rid of all crap, crap off it, right, mate? See what I mean? There you go. That will do for me. It's already been boiled, though, but always make sure to boil your kettle so that it is ready on time to put in your pan. Make sure you've got your potato peeling bowl with you for peeling. Mine's already in my sink ready. Next, grab your potato bowl and put it in the sink. Get your potato peeler out of wherever you store it. I store mine in this drawer. We all my other utilities. The next thing to do is peel your potato. But when you're peeling your potato, come over here. When you're peeling your potato, always <laughs> do it away from you. Because there's less chance of you cutting yourself then. That's what I've learned. I'll, I'll learn hard way, me. But it's meant to go in the bowl, but mine isn't. <laughs> After peeling your mashed potato, your final product should look like this. Can take you as long as you want, as long as it looks like this. Who the hell's that? I'm coming, mate, I'm coming. It's alright, it's okay, it's something to live for. Jesus told me so. Okay, now back to cooking the perfect mashed potato. The next thing to do is to get your chopping board out. Make sure to wash it first though, because it could someone before you could have like had chicken on it or something, meaning it's got bloody salmonella poisoning on it. So it's best to like wash it so it's all unsafe and that, you know what I mean, mate? That's me getting my chopping board. I'm not gonna wash it though, because I know nobody's cooked any chicken on it. Mate! Mate! The next thing to do is to put this on your chopping board and we're going to get a knife out of that drawer pan it to the drawer mate pan it back to me and we're going to cut it up into small chunks mate mate make sure to cut your potato up into small pieces so when it boils quicker so then say if you want it like in I don't know, 40 minutes cut it into bigger chunks you know what I mean if you want smaller ones, 20 minute cut, cut it into small ones, it's simple isn't it? You know what I mean? It looks big but I'm going to cut this big chunk in half so you know, just bear with me, I don't like cutting my hand off. See what I mean? It's what size you want. They're going to use them pieces Ryan. Maybe. <laughs> we are eight once we're cooked in boiled water. Well, we are eight because it'll get rid of all the bacteria in front floor. Well, actually, we didn't touch that floor. It don't matter. At the end of the day, boiled water clears it all. It does. Then why wash your hands at the beginning and wash your stuff at the beginning? I did. You saw it. Well, why do it if, it's, if boiled water clears it all? You tell me. You tell me. When your potato is finally chopped up, it should look like this. The next thing I'm going to do is get a pan. So you need to put your potato chips in a pan. Potato chips over there. Right, when choosing your perfect pan for your perfect mashed potato, make sure you've got one what's relevant to size. Like I'm going to use this one because it ain't much potato. But if I, say if I had loads of potatoes, I'd use that to overflow when mashing, so I'd use one like that. But I'm not going to use that. So I ain't got much mash. 
You know what I mean? And the next thing to do is really simple. Tip the potato chunks into the pan. <laughs> Are you gonna use them, right? Of course I am. <laughs> In the pan. Your kettle should be boiled now, so now we're going to put boiling water into the chunks. Make sure to put a decent amount of water in to your pan because if you don't put that much in, it'll all just disappear and then you're going to have crap potato really. Make sure it's a bit like swimming like that. Next thing to do is to put your mashed potato on the stove. Like that. Right, to cook your mashed potato, just put gas on it, it's pretty simple. But make sure, right, if you say if you want it to be done really quick, just stick it to ice one. That's why I just stick it to that one there. You can't see if it's ice one. It's done in about 20 minutes, quick meal. But just cook it with all the tea. If you think your beef's going to take 50 minutes, just put it halfway. Something like that, that's all I know. It's like that, oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> oh, damn, me on set. Wait, it's out. Wait, go. Oh, no, it's this one here. Come on, quick. <laughs> That's that one there. There we go. Well, you don't want to watch that cook for 20, 15 minutes, do you? So, while well, that's cooking, I'm going to go interview some people at Wakey College and see what they think makes the perfect mashed potato. Let's go. Welcome to Wakey College. But before we interview the students, I'm going to take you to my main band, Billy Pierce, to see what he thinks about mashed potato in it. What would you say makes the perfect mashed potato? Uh, well, somebody said, how do you divide 10 potatoes between six people? Yeah. Mash them. What, uh, what makes the perfect uh, butter? Butter. Butter and a bit, of, a bit of milk on and a little bit of cream and wash it all up. Yeah. Is that, that right? That is brilliant. Is, right? yeah. is, it, is it? My main man here, Billy Pierce. <laughs> you never know. My main man. <laughs> Save it up to be a minor celebrity. Ah, uh, my main man. <laughs> main man, Billy Pierce. What a legend! I should have said what a legend. Now follow me. We're going to get some interviews. What's your name, man? It's Corey, bro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. What would you say makes a perfect mashed potato? It's just the fact that it's really creamy, bruv. You can bloody just get yourself into that thing. It's really just nice. It's creamy. Milk. It's just, oh. Yeah. Fucking lovely with your dinner. In it! In it! Right, this is me main man, James. What would you think makes a perfect mashed potato? Ooh! Oh, you need. That's James for you. James Masters. What would you say makes a perfect mashed potato? Nothing, I think mashed potatoes are shit. What, why is that? Because I don't like potatoes. Shall I tell you what? He's a fucking gun. <laughs> this is one of my main men, Alex. What would you say makes the perfect mashed potato? A perfect mashed potato um, need... has to be a really, really creamy, creamy, maybe add a tad of bit of salt and yeah, hey presto. I totally agree. That was some wicked interviews. Now let's go, the mashed potato is done. Get in. Got a nation <laughs> After 20 minutes, your mashed potato should be cooked. But I'm just going to use this oven glove because that's boiling because it's got no like plastic and also that is an unsafe pan. We'll not use an unsafe pan like I've done. Seriously, this can be involved. Now, obviously, turn the gas off. There we go, like that. Now, before I um, mash it, I'm just, I'll put them back on in a minute. I'm just going to lay this down on the utility to put the pan on as I'm mashing because I don't want to burn my county utility, do I? So it'll cost that out of 100 quid to get that fixed. No way. No way. The next thing to do is to empty the water down the sink because you don't want water, do you, with your mashed potato? I shouldn't be doing this with these on because of my stupid and healthy safety rules. I'm using this glove and it's harder than it looks. See what I mean? I need to start. I'll just give you... Then you do that, and then you're like, and I know it, don't say. It's because I got this glove on. Oh, I'll be alright now. Now I'm just going to put this on here, because it's ready, ready mashed. Put, take the lid off and put it in the sink, ready to put washing that. Now I'm just going to get a fork out of this drawer, 
to Wimpix. We don't, in my family, we don't use a masher. We use a fork. So it's more power involved and it gets it much more, much more wimped to make it taste much nicer. So I've been told by my grandma top tips. She's not nicked top tips. The next thing I'm going to do is get the butter out, ready to put in my thing. I only need about, I don't know, about a teaspoon of mash because you don't want it too dry or too wet. So we just do that. I almost forgot you need a knife as well to put it into even smaller chunks before to make the mashing right when you're using a fork that is. I wasn't meant to put butter in before I did this, so fair on you just it don't matter if stuff goes all over, it just happens, doesn't it? You just cut it up into smaller pieces like that. See what I'm doing? Cut it quick. Well it might take a couple of minutes. When chopped up it should look a bit like that. Now it's time for mashing. Now it's time for me to mash my mashed potato. When mashing, you start off by doing that across, then twisting from side, this gets all lumps out of it. This is what you do when you use a fork. Let's put them back in, I'll be alright, it's only been on a cloth. Might be a bit lumpy actually. I hope this perfect mash turns out good. It's not looking good at the moment. <laughs> it's so funny. Your final product should look like that when mashed. The next thing I'm going to do, I ain't actually done this before, I ain't even in script. Look, I'm going to add milk into my grandma told me this technique. It makes it much more lighter and more creamy flavoured. I'm not 100% if it actually does it nice or what, but it's worth a good to I don't know, so about that, yeah, that'll do. The next thing I'm going to do is just mash it again. It's not looking, I think I put too much milk in. Yeah. Just bear with me. That's you know, see what I mean? That's nice and creamy. Texture, see what I mean? Milk makes it much more nicer. That's the perfect mashed potato. Right? Here we go. It's time to plate up. <laughs> it's a bit sloshy, but trust me, it's the nicest match you could possibly get. You should use a better spray. I use my finger, it don't matter. So I've washed my hands, haven't I? That is the nicest mashed potato I have ever had. This is the perfect mashed potato. What do you think of that mashed potato? It's bloody perfect. I totally agree. Thank you for watching my perfect mashed potato. I hope you agree. But next time on Ryan Rolls Perfect Kitchens, I'm going to show you how to cook a pizza from Tesco. Should I say Morrison's? <laughs>